decide the SEC East. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, and it still is. Listen, it, it's still going to be a huge game. Uh, obviously, for Tennessee uh, to continue on the road that they were on last year, where they are um, inches away from competing for either the SEC East or in the college football playoffs. They were right there, if you remember, going all the way to the end of the season. This is a huge game to go on the road and play at Florida. Now, Florida might not be where they were years ago, uh, but they're still Florida. They're still going to be a good team. It's still the swamp on a Saturday night and a huge game. Now, for Florida on the flip end, in the Billy Napier era, they're still waiting, I think, for that first marquee win. Uh, this would certainly be it for them uh, and, you know, would, would be a great a great challenge for them. Uh, you know, it, it is. I think Tennessee with with, with uh, Joe Milton, first road test, uh, we, we get to see really what Tennessee is all about in this game. We, we've seen Utah, uh, the Utah-Florida game. We've seen Florida in the Utah game when they went out there, uh, you know, and didn't look as sharp offensively, played some pretty good defense. And can they come up and play a good defensive game, put it together, keep it a close game, and let the fans in the swamp kind of take the game over and give them the edge will be the key. Yeah, for me, I'm I'm very interested in Joe Milton. Uh, Cause I said at the beginning of the season, I've gone on record here on the YouTube show that if he harnesses the natural ability, he could be a guy we're talking about mid October end of November as a Heisman trophy candidate, because he has everything you need to be a, a, a great quarterback, whether or not he uses that and has learned from his past remains to be seen. So coach, for me, this is the first time put him in the swamp, Put him in as hostile environment as you can because this is a good opportunity to learn what Tennessee has in their quarterback for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. And that's the, the biggest challenge you have in the SEC. Road games in the SEC. The what does in the swamps one of the hardest environments you're going to play in. But that's going to happen week in, week out in the Southeastern Conference. And the crowd noise, all the things that go on that affect you. It, it you know, you might just say it's just the noise and it's hard to communicate. It's not that. I mean, it's going to feel like 90,000 people are falling on top of you. It, it is a it's a it's a very intimidating feeling and intimidating. I mean, the swamp is certainly an. And as momentum starts to slip at any time, it swirls out of control when the crowd gets into a frenzy. Yeah. And, you know, I think I've got this number right. But three and six SEC in the non-conference matchups the first two weeks of the season. And so now you're looking at it. I mean, this thing, other than Georgia, speaking from an East perspective, I mean, it's all wide open. Kentucky's in this thing. Uh, Florida's in this thing. Tennessee. I mean, it's it's wide open, Coach, because it doesn't and, – and, and even Georgia, to a certain extent, hasn't looked amazing – and, and so this is a really good start to the season for a couple of these teams that when you kind of look at the SEC big picture, this thing isn't as foregone of a conclusion as we thought it was. Yeah, I you know, I mean, listen, Georgia's got some changes. Now, granted, they still have, you know, you know what travels is a great defense and that'll stick with you for a very, very long team time. And the one thing that Georgia has is that great defense up for a lot of little issues but the east unlike the west the east hasn't been challenged and georgia you know georgia it took the, the the route they're they're not being challenged the entire season um you know out of conference uh they have conference schedule uh their crossover games you know auburn's down old miss could be a game uh for them so they have the east teams now the question is who is that team i don't know that you know Tennessee we haven't seen uh the you know Kentucky I don't think has looked great they uh, have in their first couple of games South Carolina obviously did, did not look good against North Carolina I, I the SEC as a whole right now uh has a non-conference image issue uh so far this season I think and now the benefit they have is they're all marquee names uh, with great teams. And when they get in conference, 
the margin for error, the margin within the conference, it tends to be smaller than out than a lot of other conferences. And so they're going to have opportunities playing against each other to make up the ground and, and maybe give credible wins within the conference for, for whoever is on the back end of this league. Yeah, and and this is a good start at it this weekend in terms of trying to identify that second team. I think Tennessee, just because of the offense, could probably hang with Georgia a little bit until we know more about Carson Beck. Um, but I'll, let me put it this way. How big, how important, how crucial, use any way you want to describe it, is this for Billy Napier this week? Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't think he hasn't won a rivalry game yet. And I think that is a huge deal of, you know, I mean, at Florida, you know, there's some people that have the the one true bitter rival at Florida. There's really, there's the three games that are rivals. There's Florida state, there's Tennessee and there's Georgia. And, you know, I, he hasn't gotten a win in one of those games and that for the, for the fan base, uh, obviously they want to win. You want to win championships. But the rivalry games, you get wins in those. They just it just means a little bit more for everybody, as everything in the SEC does. But as the as the rivalry games just means more. This is always a big game. I, I you know, in all my years at Florida, both as a, as an assistant and a head coach, the Tennessee game was always such a huge game, and uh, you know, and and it kind of kicks the season, the conference season off. And so th- this would be so, a, a big big win for Billy Napier in the direction the program's headed. Uh, a loss, you know, I mean, he, he could be looking at, at 0-6 after two years against his rivals, and, and that's not how Florida fans want to see things. Give me a prediction. You know, I'm going, I'm going Tennessee. I'm still, I'm still on the, the Tennessee bandwagon until they get me off with uh, Josh Heupel. The offense has looked good. Joe Milton can make all the plays. And I trust Josh Heupel, honestly, to put him in positions to succeed. I, I, I We've seen little things that, that, you know, you you pause on him at all times. Not not certainly not his talent, but I think Josh Heupel does a good job of of kind of keeping the where the offense is going and keeping it in his wheelhouse and easy for him. And I think they're improved defensively to to shut Florida down. I think I think Utah showed it. If, if you can stop the run game at Florida and make them one dimensional, you know, really shut the run game down, they they're not going to be very good on offense. And it just so happens this week in the SEC, some conference games, really, like I said, on a on a slate that leaves a lot to be desired. You've got LSU, Mississippi State. I don't know if don't, Mississippi State. Don't sleep on that one now because yeah. that when you look at the SEC this week, I'm, I'm looking at the games. That's the one, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I mean, you're, you miss, LSU is going into Starkville. And I mean, the cowbells will be ringing and it'll be loud. It'll be a hostile environment. Uh, it'll be a, a great game. Uh, Mississippi State's 2-0, and you know, right now. And LSU's kind of already been backed into a corner. So um, it, it's that to me is such an interesting matchup in the league uh, because, you know, I mean, Mississippi State wants to show that that they're here with, with Zach Arnett in his first year, that they're they're a legit team and they're they're still headed in the in the direction to uh be a great team and continue on uh, uh, the run that they've started this season. Uh they found a way to win last week against Arizona, but, but LSU kind of this is it now. This is it yeah. for them. You know, I mean it, it, they they can't afford to go down again. Yeah, you mentioned it. First it, Mississippi State got incredibly fortunate last week against Arizona at home. Uh, it, it needed a replay in overtime to get the win, and it was a good effort by Arizona. Mississippi State's defense looked really, really good. Turned the ball over a lot to Mississippi State's defense, which is what they're going to hang their hat on under Zach Arnett, former defensive coordinator, taking over uh, from Mike Leach. But when you look at it now, and we had made this a topic of conversation on, on college football final and throughout the day Saturday, like if you're one of these big-time SEC West schools, LSU, Alabama, AM, like your house money, it's gone. It Going is. to week three, you've lost every window to stub your toe because you lost too early. Absolutely. I, I give LSU the, the nice thing for them. It is a noon kickoff. We'll have that one at noon on ESPN. But it uh it, it is so I mean, you know, I mean, you know, when you're that's 11 a.m. local kick, the, the, everybody hasn't had the full day to tailgate in the SEC in Starkville. So um, 
But I, I, it is, like you've said, all three of those teams, whoever is coming out of the West needs to win out and and win the the SEC championship game. You know, I, I think right right now you're looking at all those contenders. I, I the you know the the worst thing that that Greg Sankey's looking at is that we, we have a two loss West team that has a non conference loss against a marquee program that's going to be in the discussion. Winning the SEC championship, yeah. I mean, I mean, you re- could it knock them all out? I mean, yeah. right. And we we haven't been on these. We haven't been in, in these waters recently with the SEC. But I don't think any of us had LSU, A and M, and Alabama all losing by week three. No, and you know, and, and out of conference, so, yeah, and and you know, I mean, they all got to play each other. So I mean, two of the three are at least going to have two losses. At a minimum. And, and that's nothing. That's not stubbing your toe. I mean, that's nobody else coming up to get you. That's that's nobody in the East coming up to get you. That's no Old Miss or Mississippi State or, you know, Arkansas. The one thing about the SEC West, that there's no weak spot in the West. That That's the one thing that makes the West tough. And these guys have like, as you've said, they have that loss on the on the record. And I don't you know, I mean, who's the weak team? In the West, I mean, you you want to play Arkansas with that two headed running attack? You want to go play the Lane Train? You you're right. not jump you're not jumping up and down for that game. Even Hugh Freeze in year one's going to get you. Hugh Freeze is always going to sneak up and get somebody, right? And you know, I mean, I, I mean, that's always been the track record for him. And then, you know, and Mississippi State, uh, you know, I mean, you want the you want to show up in a must win game with the cowbells going on a Saturday? That that's that's not easy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.